South Korea says Pyongyang has fired three ballistic missiles into the sea off its east coast. CNN's Paul Hancock is live in Seoul, South Korea with the details on this. So, Paula, what all do we know so far about these three ballistic missiles that were fired by North Korea and how long will it likely be before we know the capability of these missiles? Well, Rosemary, we're just getting some more information now from the Joint Chiefs of Staff here in Seoul. Uh, and they say they believe that they flew around 1,000 kilometres, uh, saying that they are assumed to be Rodong mid-range missiles, uh, and that they believe that they were actually fired into Japan's air defence identification zone, uh, so the air zone that, uh, that Japan monitors uh, for its own security, uh, and also saying that there was no prior navigational warning uh, for these launches. Now, we heard a little earlier from Japan's uh, defence minister, he said that they've uh, increased their, their state of vigilance. He's calling for more uh, gathering and analysis of this information. Uh, the JCS, though, also did uh, condemn what they said is once again a violation of United Nations Security Council resolutions, that North Korea is not allowed to use this ballistic technology uh, as per these resolutions, but uh, time and time again ignores that and does carry out these launches. They also gave some kind of insight into why they believed North Korea was doing this today, which is fairly unusual from the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But they said two things that we could look at is uh, that the G20 summit that's going on in China at the moment. We know that uh, the presidents of China and South Korea met just a matter of hours ago and talked about North Korea. And also towards the end of the week on Friday, you have uh, Foundation Day, so that the day that they celebrate the foundation of North Korea. Rosemary. Now, of course, the big fear each time North Korea fires off these ballistic missiles is just how much progress has been made since the previous launch. And from what you said there, I mean, if they're assessing a thousand kilometres, that's significant progress since the last, isn't it? Uh, uh, how much of a concern is that? Well, it really depends on, on which missile you're looking at. Certainly a couple of weeks ago with the, uh, the submarine-launched ballistic missile, uh, they did make uh, tremendous uh, inroads with that. It was, it was hailed as a, a great success in North Korea. You saw photos of, uh, of the leader, Kim Jong-un, looking absolutely delighted, uh, hugging uh, the, uh, the scientists and, and the military around him. Uh, that flew around 500 kilometres, and that was believed by many experts to be a significant uh, success story or a significant increase in the capability. Now certainly with these Rodong missiles we've seen them fired a number of times. Uh, we don't know the exact altitude of the, of the missiles, we don't know, uh, so, so of course that could make a difference to how far it could fly if it, uh, it flew at uh, a certain altitude. But the fact that it went into uh, this Japanese uh, ADIZ of course is significant and a great concern to Japan. Yes, most definitely, and we'll wait for more analysis and assessment on that. Our Paula Hancock's joining us there from South Korea, in Seoul. It is just uh, 3.15 in the afternoon. We'll talk again next hour on this very issue. Let's take a very short break here, but still to come.